Simple Cooking Cooking Show with um, Edith and Herbert, or Danielle of Edith and Herbert. And uh, the funny thing is we're not really going to do cooking today, but <laughs> it's going to cook itself. So um, I'm excited. This is I've never done fermentation aside from sourdough bread. So you're going to, again, teach me some yeah. slow food preserving technique. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, what you do with the sourdough is so labor intensive compared to what you're going to do with doing something like sauerkraut or any of the any of the fermenting of the vegetables. It's truly like the biggest part of the whole thing is the beginning. And then after that, you're basically just monitoring to make sure there's no mold. Yeah. So that I want to say that first that the reason I've never done this is because I've been scared safety wise, botulism, mold yeah. and spoiling a product. So how do you make sure, first of all, that there's not going to be any of that or that you're not scared so that everything like right before we got started, I hot washed everything. Okay. So you want to make sure that everything is super, super clean. You, I was just washing my hands, like, right before I jumped on the call. Like, you want to make sure that everything is really clean. You don't want to mm -hmm. have, like, anything under your fingernails. You, or if you, you know, if you're worried that you might, maybe wear some clean kitchen gloves, gloves or something. Um, okay. Because all of those little microbes that are there, like, under your nails or on your skin could affect the sauerkraut or whatever it is that you're fermenting. So you just want to make sure that everything's really clean. Okay. So have you, you've been doing this a long time and you haven't had like a spoiled product or anything? Or? I, so the only, I guess I would say the, the thing that I had the hardest time with was kombucha. So like my kombucha oh. got all moldy. And so I just tossed it out and I was like, I can't, but supposedly some people say you can save some of this stuff. But like, I'm like you where I do get nervous about like the botulism thing. Like my mom would never eat any of the stuff that I would ferment. Cause she's like, botulism, you're trying to kill me. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that's like something that I just really pay attention to. So if I do see any mold, I think one time I've had to throw out sauerkraut. Um, so if okay. I do see any mold coming up, they say that you can just take out that part, like whatever has the mold mm -hmm. and throw it out and keep going. But yeah. I get too nervous. Yeah. I just toss it all out. So how do you, so your prevention of that is clean everything and then just check it like regularly. Check it all the time. So like here are the ones that I started a couple yeah, weeks that's... ago. So it's in okay. a green glass. So it's a little bit harder to see. Wow. But here are the turnips that I was pickling. And so these look, they're a weird color because I put radish in there, not radish, um, beets in there. Okay. Because I was like, oh, yeah, the beets will turn it pink. Like, this is bright red because of the beets yeah. that are in it. But the beets, like, totally wow. lost their color. And now it's just this weird, like, I don't know, beige color. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's like, but, wow. I mean, it's, they're, both of them are doing really well. Like, the sauerkraut definitely is going to need to get pushed down a little bit because some of the parts are floating mm. up at the top. Like, I wish I could show you. I don't know how to, like... Yeah, to see. Like, can you see... How long has this been going? Like, a week, you said? Or how... A oh, while, like okay. two weeks. Oh, my God. Yeah, like two weeks. Have you tasted it? At least two weeks. Probably longer. Yeah, it's really good. So oh, I, made that, I made the sauerkraut really smoky. Um, and I used oh, chipotle peppers, and I used this Korean chili flakes. Oh, and okay. it's like super sp smoky and spicy. It's really nice. Um, so wow. that's what, like, I was saying. You know, grab any spice that you want. Like, you don't have to do caraway seed, which is like the standard for mm. sauerkraut. Is to add the caraway seeds. Like, put whatever okay. spices you want. Like, you could truly do anything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, run us through the materials, things we need okay. first. So a cabbage. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. I, I have, have my nice too. cabbage. Um, and you can do like any cabbage you want. Like I just happen to choose green cabbage, but you can do any of the other cabbages too. Like you could do the purple cabbage. You could do Napa cabbage. You could do, you know, the 
those longer ones that they do for like kimchi. You could do any of those. Okay. So okay. what you're gonna do is when you have, if you have a cabbage, take the outer leaves off. Okay. So I just washed mine so it's a little bit wet. But I take, usually take like the, the two that are showing off. Okay. It's like dribbling everywhere. And then dry it. Right. <laughs> And dry it? Yeah, dry it. <laughs> this is so cool. And what you can do actually, like, so if you're noticing that your sauerkraut is floating to the top a lot while you're trying to pack it in, you can mm -hmm. save one of the leaves, like one of the top leaves that you just washed. And what you do is you'll put it oh. inside the jar like this and hold it like okay. it hold it all down. So I had done that with the turnips. So I don't know if you can see right here, that's the cabbage leaf. I mean, clearly it didn't work that well for oh, the turnips that okay. so flipped through. But with sauerkraut, it's a lot easier because you really pack it in. So okay. um, the kind of the first steps with this is you'll definitely need a bowl big enough to fit your okay. cabbage cut up in. You need okay. salt. So you're going to do about like one to three tablespoons of salt. Okay. And, and what kind coarse is good or regular? Doesn't uh, matter. I would say not coarse, probably like fried. Okay. Yeah. Or like Fine. kosher salt okay. is okay too. Um, okay. I mean, and really it's like the amount of salt that you put in is mm -hmm. kind of, is more so related to how salty you want it to be. Um, okay. because you're going to cover it all with salt and you're going to massage it in. So it's all going to get the salt. It's just like how salty okay. do you want it? And then okay. what we'll keep running through, what? I'm going to grab the salt and spice, but keep going. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, Another tool that you could use is you can use a potato smasher. And unless you have, they have these like wooden sticks that you would use to mash up your ferment, your whatever you're fermenting, especially with the cabbage. But I usually just use my hands and I just sit and it does take 10 minutes. So that's why we're trying to like rush through the beginning to get to cutting up the cabbage and massaging it and then we can talk more about everything while we're massaging the cabbage so joe when you get back and you have um, you've gotten your salt i'm gonna what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna cut my cabbage in half all right got it found some korean so easier to chop. spices and my salt cool so I cut it in half. And what you want to do is when you're cutting it, you want to try to have your slices as even as possible. And um, oh, Mario said to, to pin the title. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so you want to have your slices yeah. as thin as, as kind of even or thin as possible so that when you're massaging it all together, it all starts to degrade at the same rate like you don't want big chunks and small chunks because the small chunks are going to get super fermented and then if you eat that small chunk you'll be like oh yeah this is like the right temperature or the right mm. fermentation that i want but then you'll have these like huge chunks that aren't even at the right from fermentation point so okay i know you're like you know we've already talked about my knife skills that aren't super great <laughs> But I'm going to try to show you. Um, so you're doing small or? I do it pretty thin. It's going to be okay. hard. I don't know how to. Oh, I can reverse the camera. I forget that I can reverse the camera. Okay. Oh, so nice. obviously Perfect. this is not super skilled, but, you know, you just do like these thin kind of slices. Okay. And you want it to be as uniform as you can. You can also you use a mandolin, no? Yeah, you could totally use a mandolin. Yeah. And then when you have your slices, I'm going to actually cut these ones up a little more. You put them in your bowl. Okay. Kind of break them Easy apart enough. a little. 
Put it in your bowl. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Love it. Okay. So do you chop it up more after you slice or it's okay? What? Oh, whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. Oops. I, mean, I don't know how to do this. It's not because I did the video the other day and I had hot sugar and it was not not a good thing. Oh my gosh! No, I just like don't yeah. know, I don't know how to like show and chop at the same. time. Oh, that's time. good. Okay, yeah, I'm doing it one hand. <laughs> You don't have, you can uh, be safe, you know. I don't, thanks, Joe. <laughs> do, do it for, <laughs> that's how people get killed. They're doing it for the gram, and then they, you know. <laughs> well, well, I don't know if for I'm the selfies. <laughs> so I would also suggest, oh, see how it like, doesn't it, it's like so bright. Cutting out that oh. kind of core part, you don't really, you don't want that in there. Okay. No core then. Okay. So yeah. Kind of V it out. And is this um for a half a cabbage is like one jar gonna be good or I actually you could get away with so I'm gonna do my whole cabbage in one of these size jars. Really? Yeah. It's gonna wow, okay. Yeah, you're mas really? you're gonna massage it down. Like really you're really gonna get it down. Okay. Nice. Can't wait. So what do you eat with your um, pickled veg? Or do you just eat it plain? Or you put it on stuff? So I, um, you can do like a lot of different things. So I like to, I'll put it like on top of a salad. Or I'll put it, mm. um, I mean, I don't eat meat, but like, it, like red meat. But like if you ate red meat, it's actually something that's a really good Thing to accompany oh. red meat because it helps with digestion and it will help you to better digest the red meat that makes sense that's why like yeah. when you go to other like some countries like in germany when they serve meat they serve sauerkraut oh with it. i didn't really realize and it's, that and it's like the fermentation is to help with digestion Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. like broth. All these like all really that. like intense nubby bits, like you don't have to put in because it oh, okay. takes a lot longer. Okay. To ferment than the other stuff will. All right. This is looking nice. Okay. So I just, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna do half the cabbage because. Okay. Yeah, I'm about done here. Okay. I'll put that in a soup or something, this little... I'll probably just finish it up when we're done. <laughs> like, eat it raw? Oh, no, like, make like make more sauerkraut. Oh, okay. All right, so put it in the bowl? Yeah, put it in the bowl. Hopefully it's... Okay, good. so you have your sour your cabbage chopped up in the bowl, okay? So then okay. you're going to get your salt and so you want to do about like one to three tablespoons so mm -hmm. you know if you watched the <laughs> the herb infused oil you'll know i'm not one for measuring i'm more <laughs> just like just gonna figure it out just gonna do it but you want to do about one to three So how do you know uh, one to three tablespoons, like why that measurement? Is it based on the weight of the? Um, so one to three would be, that's for like a whole medium sized cabbage. Oh, that's just okay. like what I've been told. Okay. Like what I've found. Okay, so what you're gonna do, I wish I could like prop it right here. I'm just gonna like prop it. Um, so I could show you. So once you do that, you want to massage. You're going to massage the cabbage for a while. Okay, we can chit chat. 
Catch yeah, up. so it's going to be about like 10 minutes of, <laughs> of massaging. Trying to figure my salt open. So you did how much for half a cabbage? One? So yeah, do between like one, like one to two. I would say. Okay. I have seen some people, they rinse the cabbage after they massage. Are we going to do that or? So it's, no. Oh, okay. So we just keep it looks out. like it's, it's rich. So you, you're just going to get in there and just start. Okay. So it looks like it's rinsed, Great. but what's happening is like you want to make sure that every like sliver of the cabbage has come into contact with salt because what that's going to do is it's okay. going to start breaking it down and the what looks like I what I'm going to assume is what was the rinse is actually mm -hmm. the juices being leaked out of the cabbage and that's the that's the mm. liquid like the brine comes from the cabbage itself okay if you Just don't salt water enough, yeah and it's but it's also drawing the moisture out of the cabbage leaves itself mm. oh this is so cool show the fingers i can't i'm already thinking what i should eat with it <laughs> It's going to take um, well, two weeks. <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's like the amount of time is based on how pickled you want it to be, how sour you want it to be. I was so the least loves, amount. I would say at least a week at the very least. Okay. A week. 10 okay. days probably is best. Okay. And then you can store it in the fridge. Yeah. So then once it's it. gotten to the point, like the consistency or the flavor that you're wanting, like as fermented as you're wanting it to be, then mm -hmm. you put it in the fridge. You put a lid on it, like a real lid, and then you put it in the fridge. So like for me, I have these fermentation lids from this brand called Hop Top. And Ooh. it's they're actually like, they're lids that are made for beer, like to make your own beer at home uh, okay. and kombucha. Mm -hmm. But they're used, like you can use it to ferment anything. So okay. after you've kind of gotten everything covered with the salt, you want to start to get a little aggressive with it and like crunch it. Like okay, I like, was already getting aggressive, but <laughs> okay, yeah, you want to be like aggressive. So that's where like if you there there are these mallets that people can buy, and it's like a mm -hmm. wooden stick, and you sit and you you just like mash it. Um, oh, okay. Use like the potato masher, like and just start oh, okay. like mashing it like that um, mm -hmm. or you just use your hands and you just kind of like crunch and because you're trying to start getting the yeah I can feel it liquid. getting a lot more moist here yeah wow it's so cool so when do you add the spices if you were to add um like our seasonings or so right after this, like right after you do oh, okay. this for like after. about 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So we can talk a little bit about why fermented foods, like what do you know about fermented foods? Well, you know, I wanted to say because um, I was researching a little bit and really the whole refrigeration of food has, has been pretty recent in the time span of, of human history. Yeah. So this is the way that... Um, for the better part of our human existence, people have been preserving food and getting their vegetables, um, just and like vitamin C um, to prevent scurvy. I think some sailors would take it, some f fermented food on their ships. Um, yeah, yeah, I like sauerkraut. So. so it's really amazing how this is this is such ancient science and health that yeah before refrigeration this was it this was all about like well and beer and all these vegetables to preserve everything so but you oh, tell I'm me so sorry the train. the train oh it's okay <laughs> so loud i have dogs here i got laundry in there and yeah don't worry but you yeah, tell me so 
it's, you know, it's, it's great that you say that and you bring that up that like refrigeration and like all these preservatives that are in our food, that's all really new. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I don't even know, maybe it's been the last hundred years. Like, I don't even know how long refrigerators have been around. Yeah. Um, not very long. Yeah. And at so, least one for every person, like they maybe had one for the block, and, you know, but then as time went on, each person has like now three refrigerators or something. In yeah, their house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. And so actually like our bodies have are made to ha take in a lot of probiotics and prebiotics mm. but with the way that we eat our food now we don't actually have a lot of fermented food in our diets which is so nourishing for our gut and it's actually the thing that like really helps promote digestion and it helps to break down the food that we're eating so you know like the settlers and stuff and like people who, you know, like, I don't know why I keep thinking about the Oregon trail, but it, it actually is like the Oregon trail people. Um, but it's like, you know, the people who would go and like hunt and they'd bring home meat or they would, you know, have mm. animal and livestock and they would eat a lot of meat. They ate a lot of fermented foods. And so that's why their bodies could handle all the meat that they would eat because they oh. would have all these like amazing nutrient de dense microbes that would, be feeding their gut and helping them feel better yeah wow i just want to show people the amount of liquid so far that has oh, yeah, come out like, of this it's like, it's squeeze it it's yeah like, like, like i'm squeezing it so much and it would just start it off as regular this whole cabbage you know it's like yeah. you didn't add any water so yeah the the brine you're talking about for people that don't know brine is just salt water and that's what's going to preserve this cabbage. The just salt and the water that's naturally in it is going to prevent bacteria and then create. Um, do you know much about the, I don't know, the strain of bacteria like lactobacillus? Yeah, or so something? this is lacto fermenting. Okay. When you do it with the salt, yeah, mm. that's what we're doing. Okay. And so, I, don't know. I mean, I couldn't tell you what bacteria is <laughs> yeah <laughs> but what other vegetables can we do the same technique for i is that so, is this okay, what you've so done for this, your yeah turnips? so the same technique like doing it this way where you're sitting and massaging it you don't really do this for anything unless it's like a leafy you could do this with um like brussels sprouts too oh, okay but with the other vegetables that i've pickled or like fermented in this way what I do is I create the salt brine like on its own and then mm -hmm. I'll put the veggies in the salt brine. So it's like you can massage, you know, you can massage the veggies a little bit, get some of the salts in them, try to release some of the liquid and then you put them in the jar or you just put them in the jar like freshly cleaned and you mm -hmm. pour this like really salty brine over them and mm. then you ferment it like that. So I've done mm. carrots, I've done green beans, I've done radishes, wow. I've done cucumbers to make like fermented pickles. I mean, Ooh, I yeah. love fermented foods. So wow. anything that I'm like, like, oh, cool, I can like, there is this um, Portlandia sketch where they're like, we can pickle it. <laughs> and it's like, anything. And so I used to joke that like, I would like I could pickle it like and give me any vegetable like I'll pickle it. anything. <laughs> um, but you know some people do like watermelon rind like they'll pickle watermelon. Oh rind. yeah, so in, in the totally south a lot. Like a rind. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I I have this really funny book that's like for kids, but it's like the American food history from each state and they um oh that's cool they were saying i think it was arkansas or i don't know one of one of those like southern states is like known for watermelons and they do all these crazy things with watermelon and yeah pickling was one but i have to look up the state it was so fascinating um, how funny Okay, yeah. look at this is incredible. 
this is just like, yeah, now I can see how it's going to fit into that jar. I was like, how are we going to fit yeah, half yeah, the yeah. cabbage <laughs> into this the little jar? In the <laughs> this is really... So if you don't have like a fermenting lid, what you can do is like a coffee filter, either the paper okay. coffee filters or a paper or a cloth coffee filter, like the coffee socks. You just Ooh, put that okay. over the lid and then you use the band from a canning jar to close the lid. You don't okay. want to have a tight seal on your jar because oh. it releases gases. And then if the gases get stuck, <laughs> you're going to hear like, mm. it's either going to start overflowing and spilling in like oh. the cupboard that wherever you're fermenting it or it's going to pop. The lid. Yeah. Okay. So you um, can you use like cheesecloth? You have like to double really, really layer it. Okay. So yeah, coffee filter is probably best. Be, you don't want things to get in. Okay. What do you mean things to get in? Like, like dust bug. and all like that? You don't want a bug to like crawl in like a net. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mario asked, um, is all that water from cabbage or did you add water? This no, is it's all, all from the cabbage. All from the cabbage. We, we added what, salt. The reason we're like massaging it and like beating uh -huh. it up and like squeezing it is to have it release the natural <laughs> water that's within the cabbage. Yeah, it's incredible. Like I'm going to be feeding him a lot of sour cream. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, you have to help so. his gut around. <laughs> Get excited. <laughs> no, this I mean, is a great is way. Like super important. Go, Go ahead. ahead. <laughs> it's hard because I can't see you. <laughs> so I know I there's a lag the cues. for the audio. Uh, no, don't worry about it. Oh, uh, okay. So um, the, the thing that's what I'm going to actually start putting it inside the jar now. Okay, and how do you know? What is the cue here that we have, like, it's been 10 minutes, but how do you know when it is ready yeah, to go Yeah, I mean, it's just, you want, like, see, there's, like, a lot of liquid coming out already, and so yeah. you know, you're going to pour that liquid into the jar, and then when you put it in the jar, you're going to, you're going to squeeze it up more, like, you're going to kind of beat it up a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so, and maybe still, we're ask, waiting on the spices. The camera? Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes I don't spice mine. But yeah, this would actually oh. be the time to spice it. Okay. Um, like, oh, you got a little production assistant. I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go rinse my hands. I will okay. be right back. Okay. okay, me too. You have guys uh, any questions? We are at the stage of washing hands, very important. <laughs> but we just um, put salt in our cabbage, massage it for 10 minutes. All this water is natural from the cabbage. And that is gonna be our brine that's gonna go in the jar now. And then we're gonna start the, the whole aging process with this cabbage. Yeah, the, so yeah, this is how like the fermentation is gonna start. And then if you wanna like, put garlic you could do onions mm. like all of those things would ferment with it and they're like fermented garlic and fermented onions are delicious mm. yeah do you so, have like, to chop them delicious. up or you can leave them whole no chop them up i mean unless they're exactly. tiny but like definitely like you know like you could do like slices like slices of onion or slices of the garlic like garlic okay. chips you know mm. Okay, so okay. for me, because I'm on a real, like, spicy food kick, I'm going to put <laughs> okay. these Korean, I can't, well, I can't yeah, see. this is similar what I have, I think. <laughs> like My a... production assistant. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'm going to do these, what are you doing? Uh, well, it's super Korean, I don't know what it says. Oh, yeah, 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 great. <laughs> chili flakes of some sort. Um, so Joe, like you had made a comment that you wanted to try to make it a little bit like kimchi. So you would want to yeah. add garlic to yours to give it oh. some more of that flavor, you know, and you would oh, want to okay. put like some ginger in there too. I think I just want to add I'm this for this one. And then nice. 
then the next batch I'll do maybe a little because I still want to taste like the first fermentation. Um, okay, so Mario asked, what are some common foods we eat that are fermented? So um, some cheeses, the mm. yogurt, um, like the yogurt. kefir, so like the lubni that I was talking about on Friday night, like that's oh. fermented. Um, do you make your own? Oh, no, Joe, I'm not that advanced. <laughs> okay, no, I, well, I don't <laughs> Um, and we don't really eat it that much, but, um, okay. I don't know. What are some other like fermented foods that we eat? Yeah. I mean, it's usually it's like the cow. fermented okay. veggies. So it, this, like when you go to the market and if you want to buy something that's fermented, you mm -hmm. go to the refrigerated section, you go to like the raw food refrigerated section. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be like the canned sauerkraut that's sitting on a shelf because something that's fermented isn't shelf stable. Like you would get it, it's because it's a raw food, it's live, it's a probiotic. And so yeah. you want to, you want to get it from the, um, the refrigerator. Okay. Yeah. But you know what, to be honest, there really aren't that many common foods that we eat that are fermented because it's been yeah. taken out of our diet so much because in now the it's US, like, you know, like, yeah, in the um, US. In Korea, like if you go eat Korean food, there's I think quite a lot are fermented. Kimchi yeah. yeah, kimchi and other pickled things that they do and yeah, eggs. radish. Pickled eggs. They do pickled eggs. Mm, yeah, yeah. Even Chinese, a lot of foods are. Yeah, we need to. We're yeah. There's like tofu, the stinky tofu. Oh yeah. They do like the the soybeans. I think it is. You know, and it's like, you always see it and it's like stringy, the stringy beans. Um, mm. That's like fermented soybeans. Okay. okay. So after you've incorporated the spices, you're going to put it in your very clean sanitized jar. Okay. So start putting it in the jar. Nice. But I was going to say, this is a great way um, for people to eat vegetables if they're just like tired of eating it the same way yeah or like just want some variety this is yeah nice for sure because you, you truly can pickle like anything i mean i don't really know how like <laughs> lettuce would taste like romaine lettuce or something but you could do it you know uh-huh okay yeah so i think cabbage holds up really nice the it texture does. and everything yeah Okay, so you're going to put it in, and then you're going to smash it down again. So all the liquid's going in there from what all we... The, all of it. You want everything. all of it. And sometimes I'll even create, like, extra brine. Oh, okay. And how do so, you like, do that? Here. What? How would you do that? Just salt water. Okay. So you, you're going to smash it. Like, you want to smash okay. it all the way down. See, like... That's a half a cabbage, and it isn't even, the jar even half full. Yeah, this is nuts. Okay. Yeah. I think mine looks like it might need more liquid or something. No? No, that's good. That's good. That's you good. want a lot of liquid. You really, you want the liquid to be higher than the cabbage. Okay, so I'm just... Wow, this is cool. And you, yeah, you're gonna like push, 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 push. Okay. And really pack it in. Nice. This is This great. is why it's so important to have really clean hands when you're doing this. Yeah, or utensils. All right. <laughs> or utensils, yeah. I mean, like, um, different companies like mason mason jar tops or something like there's a mm -hmm. bunch of different companies that sell fermentation kits where they have all the different equipment you would need to ferment stuff so they would provide the tops they would provide like the the little glass stones that you would put in to keep the liquid above the vegetable that you're fermenting mm, okay so mine's like good to go all of my my liquid is like at the top okay um, and then what you're gonna i'm gonna wash my hands again okay 
Okay. Very cool. I'm very excited for this. Okay. Okay. So, Danielle, is this, should I make more brine? See. Or is this? Really pack your, pack your stuff down. You should be okay. Really, like, pack it, like, take your hand and just really shove it in. Or your spoon. Yeah. Okay. But your hand might be okay. better, Joe. I can't fit it in there. <laughs> I need a big oh. hand. <laughs> okay. What about so. a, what about a, um... A potato thing. Uh, I don't oh, think just kidding. Fit. It won't fit. Yeah, it won't fit. Yeah, that's I only good for another... the bowl. Next time I'll get a wide mouth jar, I guess. But yeah, but this is working. Um, I see more liquid coming up, so it's a little better. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, like this is the quick, like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And you know what you can do, like. You can, do you have like a tiny mason jar or like something else, like a something that's glass that's small that would fit mm. in there? Because like what you could do is you oh. put, um, let me see if I can find one. Well, I have the cabbage leaf. We can... Yeah, you could do the cabbage leaf. Like, okay. so what you would do is you would take it, um, not that one here. Like a you shot glass. It? A yeah. shot glass, yes. Yeah. Yes, you could hold a glass. Okay. I have one. Let me grab it. Okay. So, yeah, you would take a shot glass mm -hmm. and you would put it in and see how it raises the level oh. of the liquid. So yeah, that it's really just like that. covered. Just like okay. that. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. But mine was doing a pretty good job, so I don't really need it. And what then what you do is you'll put your lid on. So I'm putting on my fermentation top, but you can put like your piece of cloth. Okay. Or your coffee filter. Yeah, I have a cloth here, but let me see if I can put this cabbage in here. So just like. So like this, like you put it in. Oh, no, some fresh. So you put it in okay. and you shove it all the way down so that the lick, so that it's like pushing all the rest of the cabbage in. Okay. And then would you remove that when you go to open it or you can eat it too? I think you can eat it too. I mean, I don't know how it would, it wouldn't be as fermented as everything else. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. It looks a little better. So there we go. I think. Yeah. I mean, you just gotta be careful because you really don't want stuff sticking out the top. Oh, okay. Um, because that's what's gonna get moldy and that's what's going to, like it would, it really would be better to put a shot glass if you have one. Okay, I'll probably, I'll do that after um, I have to find one glass one. I think that'll be better, okay. But let's finish the tutorial so yeah. I know how. Do so it. you put your lid on. Okay. And so my lid, because it's a fermentation lid, I just close it up and I actually like if if my um if I don't have like floating cabbage, I never have to open this. Like I almost never open this other one that I made. Okay. This one. See it's like you can see a little bit how it's on the top. So mm -hmm. you close up the lid and then check it every couple days, like I would say the first few days, just go and check it to just keep pushing, mm -hmm. keep pushing the cabbage down. So you take oh, a clean, okay. a clean anything like a clean spoon, you know, clean. I usually use like a clean wooden spoon and then I just push, 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 like push, push, push it down. So okay. I'm probably going to do, I can actually show you guys with this one. Let me go. So no floating. That's what we're trying to go for. Like, yeah, you each. don't want the floating. Sorry, I'm going to put you guys down for a second. Okay. And then for, um, right. do we need so, any to know about, it can be in sunlight, it can't be in sunlight, does it matter? No, no sunlight. Ooh. No sunlight. It's really pungent. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> no sunlight. You want to you want it to be in a cool dark place. So I keep mine in a cupboard. Okay. And then I go and I check on it and I just like see like how I'm just pushing it down so that the liquid is going yeah. to the top. Okay. Yeah. And is then it you really take, smelly? You take, <laughs> yeah, this one is because it's been <laughs> fermenting for a while. Okay. Um, but it smells like really smoky because there's like chipotle pepper and that mm. the Korean chili flakes too. Oh, okay. So it's like super smoky. It's really nice. And and there's beets in it. That's why. Like, oh, okay. The color. It. So that's the cabbage. And that's why it's red is because there's beets in it. And then. Wow. Here's like a piece of beet. <laughs> Could do like a <laughs> tasting of all your fermented foods. Yeah. So you just want to wow. push, push, push. Okay. And it's okay if like a little bit, just a little, like they're floating on the top. You know, you just want to mm -hmm. make sure that you will go push it down. Because um, like, I mean, this has been fermenting for a while. And if those have been on the top, you know, it's like mm -hmm. they haven't, um, they haven't gotten moldy. So. Oh, okay. And as it, as it ages, I think the environment becomes more um, preventive of the bacteria growing, right? It's in the beginning is more like you yeah. have to worry about like creating healthy environment. That's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, it's okay. super important at the beginning while it's starting up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how you do okay. it. That and is so cool. Yeah, that is awesome. So, I'm gonna... so like I had shown in the beginning, here are the turnips that I'm doing. Okay. It's hard to see them now. I don't know. The lighting is so. Yeah. So here are the turnips that I've been wow. doing. These are almost ready too. I just like I said, I like my stuff super, super sour. So I'm mm -hmm. going to leave it for as long as possible. Okay. But this is another one that like I'll go through and I'll just push, 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 push. Okay. But you'll see like some of them have gotten kind of like gray and clear versus some of them are mm -hmm. still a little bit more um, like dense. Oh, like these okay. are starting to get a little opaque. Translucent. Yeah. Like these ones okay. are like really dark. These ones are getting lighter. Nice. Can you use this technique? Okay. Yes, you can use this technique for other veggies. You can do... You, you wouldn't necessarily be sitting and massaging them and like kind of beating them up the way that you would do with cabbage. You would do more of a salt brine. So you would mi mix like, depending on how much you're going to do and how salty you want it, but you would do like salt in a little bit of warm water just to kind of get the salt to dissolve. And then you put cool water. You don't want to do a hot mm. Because that's, you don't want it to start out hot. You want it to be pretty room temperature. And then you would pour that brine on top of the veggie that you're going to do. So I've done, I mean, I've done like so many. Because remember, I used to have like the pickle. Edith and Herbert actually truly started yeah, out making that's pickled right. vegetables. That's like right. A decade oh ago. <laughs> I remember. We, I did pickled veggies. And then it's just been recently that I started moving into more like health, like beauty products and self-care products. Oh, but I used to okay. just pickle everything. Like I I'd have go to, to the ask, farmer's market. I would just get a bunch of veggies. Yeah. Is Does Ashley ever get concerned? Because she's like in the food, uh, food safety world. Does she ever get concerned? <laughs> No, over these actually, or is she like I get concerned when I make <laughs> that I'm making pickle things oh no she no? just said I'm concerned about how you started like 10 years ago because it was illegal like when oh. I would make the when I would make the pickles like in my kitchen and then sell yeah them, <laughs> without a food license she's gonna shut yeah. you down <laughs> But like this, she's like, what? She doesn't care. I mean, we, she doesn't even like sauerkraut. Oh, so really? I just, I eat it. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of an acquired taste. Yeah. Or maybe not, but <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's really good. Yeah. Um, it's so, it's so, so, so beneficial to your body. Like, yes, it's good to take probiotics. It's so much better to eat fermented foods because well, it's then. It's more fun. 
Come on. It's more fun, <laughs> but also it's that you don't know what bacteria are in the probiotic and if they're yeah. going to match the bacteria you have in your gut. And so mm. when you eat fermented foods, your body like will absorb and will take on the bacteria. Like it like it, you're basically feeding the good bacteria that you have in your body versus mm -hmm. trying to add more bacteria to your body. Yeah. If that makes sense. I see. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I love it. This is like and we're going to set good intentions too for this like we did with our Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> always always set always. good intentions like please heal my body. Please heal my body. <laughs> Please heal so, my body. Just hold it up so we can get a quick uh, picture. I know I'm going to close mine properly, but we'll just show it really quick for this fermentation beginner's guide. I learned so much. Well, your face in there. I want to see your beautiful face. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, like we did it. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm so excited. So I have to wait like at least a week or 10 days before I can I would start say at least 10 days. You really want it okay. to get fermented. Okay. You want it to be like really, really, when you, when you are looking at it and you can see like some bubbles and it's like when you taste it and it tastes a little fizzy, that's when you know mm. that it's fermented. Like that's when you're like, okay, cool. From here on, I know that it's going to give me like okay. some good some good properties oh wow okay this is this is great whole new territory i love it yeah <laughs> thank you it. so I mean, it's, it's much a pretty easy pretty easy so it's good yeah i mean there's a, it's a little scary at first but now that you <laughs> run through like pretty much all the techniques um I mean, it's, it's the salt is going to do the work pretty much for yeah. preserving it. That's mm -hmm. pretty much our yeah. preserver. And just here. make sure that everything is really clean. That's the, that's really important is like, make sure everything is really clean. The thing that you're using to push stuff down while you are checking on it throughout the week, make sure everything's really clean. Okay. Okay. Then I, I'm going to continue it. And that was today's simple cooking cooking show with danielle and we did fermentation and of course i have to shout out my favorite chapstick edith and herbert that danielle makes <laughs> if you like um on everything like personal care self-care products bath products bath teas I love yeah. Those. yeah so um thank it's you so much natural danielle. and herbal self-care <laughs> yes yeah i love it, it. Maybe another time we'll do other veggies so that we can show people how to make a brine and then pickle with the brine or ferment Ooh, with the brine. Yeah. Okay. That'd be wonderful. Thanks so much. Okay. I'm so excited. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everybody. Me.